Yesterday, we recorded videos of random objects around us like a cone, an auto pay, and a limo, and we used Luma AI's technology to turn them into 3D. We were fucking fascinated with the results. And today, we are gonna put these 3D objects to test. We are gonna find out if we can use them in a cinematic scene in Blender and create an AR experience for Instagram. Let's find out. To test these assets for a cinematic short, I'm just gonna be taking them into Blender to create a quick scene. First, we're gonna start by cleaning up the auto pay since the glasses were not picked up very well. Then we're gonna add the glass back. Let's add some light, a volumetric cube for that nice atmospheric effect. I forgot to scan the lamppost, so we're gonna take one from Sketchfab by Mahmood34. Shout out to you. And I think the auto pay concept is not cool enough, so let's change it to a payphone. Let's bring the limo in the scene. Let's add a little bit of spice. So I went to Mixamo, took two characters, gave them random animations, brought them to my scene. And I took the results to DaVinci Resolve, where I color graded it and added a little bit of rain and a bunch of sound effects. Here's the final result. you guys but I'm pretty satisfied with the results and the scene rendered pretty damn quickly as well considering that you can choose between high medium and low poly when you're downloading these models I would give the Luma AI scanning capabilities a big plus it's definitely gonna be a part of our workflow what about you guys now let's go check on Farhad because he is actually working on bringing the cone to the AR experience so we're gonna test that over there he has them right now in meta spark studio which is a software that allows you to create AR effects for any Instagram. Throw the cone out. Whoop. There you go. So there it works. Now, Farhat, let's see what we got. Look here. Look here. Look here. This is your Boom. cone. All right. All right. All right. Exciting times. Exciting times. Ding, 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 ding. Don't get the room. Holy fucking shit, man. What have you done? Joe. Hello, sir. Hello. Welcome. Will that work? Ah, pooch. <laughs> Can you use gum? Do you have one in your mouth? No. Tracking, tracking, tracked. There you go. That's the cone. That's the cone. Holy shit. That's the same cone that we scanned downstairs and now it's an AR. Oh, oh shit. Yo. Whoa. That is fucking cool. This is like an older augmented reality experience that we created. We just replaced the cone with the cone that we got downstairs. So this cone right here is 1.23 megabytes in size, just the mesh itself. And for that, I used a low poly export. There's the option to export medium poly and high poly. Now I can even go ahead and decimate this more to see what's the lowest size we can go without losing quality. So let's give that a try. This is the low poly mesh that we got. Boom, boom, boom. And let's just bring this lighter down. I'm going to apply and let's look at the mesh again. Okay, and let's export this. Boom. That's 1 MB. We have the texture map right here. This is in 4K. Let's see how low we can get the texture size. Oh, Since for augmented reality applications, you tend to go for really low texture file size, usually between 512 to 2K, 2K being the highest. We are going to go to 1K, which is the average. 50% will be 2K. Let's go to 1K. So originally it's around 5.6 MB. We're going down to 352 kilobytes. So now we ended up with a model that is a total of 1.3, 1.4 megabytes. That is proof to you guys that you can literally scan anything in the real world, use it in your games, use it in AR. 